Didn't I just watch this? An option type. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like I've seen this. I mean, the pro so a huge problem with a lot of this stuff is that, first, first off, don't use underscores. Underscores are grody. Okay, don't use underscores. Don't use underscores. Underscores are stupid. Um, but the thing I don't like about it in TypeScript, I want to like it. It's that you cannot add implementations. Yeah, it's a non-zero cost abstraction, right? It's not. It's you can't add implementation functions to it. You can add methods, and so. I am curious, how does For this advent of code this year, this? I've been using Rust, and... To me, this sounds a lot like when people use Booleans to represent two states. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to make a sum type. I know, exactly. I, I, I do like that. Uh, let's, let's look at this. I'm actually curious about this. Let's find out what this guy has to say. There's a really neat construct of the language that I want to talk about today, but we're not going to do it in Rust. We're going to port it to TypeScript. I'm talking about the option enum. The idea behind the option enum is that it's a wrapper for a value that may or may not exist. It should come yep. as no surprise that we're going to model this in TypeScript as a union. And the union is going to be a union of none and sum. And this is the terminology that Rust uses. I should say too that this is not unique to Rust. There are a lot of languages that do something like this. So the idea here is we're going to have this underscore type field to distinguish between the none and the sum. And the main difference here is that if we have a sum, it has a particular value. And when you have an option of t, you could have nothing or you could have something. And so this can be really useful in cases where you may have a value or it might be undefined or this function could return something or maybe it throws an error or this is a promise that... What? Can we just agree that no no underscore is probably the best the best score? A uh, great thing called promises. Uh, if you're going to do a video about options and you don't say monad, I dislike. No excuse. Yeah. <laughs> really returns a value or it might reject. And this option type can give you a unifying interface to interact with those different scenarios I just mentioned. Now we can create yeah, some helper values case. here for creating option objects. There's not really a need to construct new none values because it's just a hard-coded value. So this is the yeah. none that we can use. We have our none constant here and it just is the object you would expect. Sum, on the other hand, is a function that takes an argument and the return type is a sum of t. And we just return a new object that has our tag here, sum, and then the value as the By object. the way, using arrow functions all the time just feels like such a try-hard move. Like this syntax sucks. Can we agree that returning an object from an arrow function, it just sucks. It just looks stupid. It's it is it's it's a, it's just a, it just feels like a strong try hard on this thing. I'm a fan of arrow functions. I like arrow functions too. But using them as top level functions is not the same, right? Private type, amen. Uh, I mean, the, the thing is, is that there's a difference between this. Like, you're not really saving anything. Dude, get triple X arrow functions. You're not actually saving anything doing this, right? You're not, you most certainly aren't saving anything at all. And look at this. You're even defining a return type on here. You're, I mean, you're defining the whole thing. Like, this is fantastic. Like, just, just write a function. It just makes it easier, right? But not a jokingly function syntax. Yeah, uh, uh, function syntax I use for top level functions. For functions I pass around, I think arrow functions are fine. Right, that's kind of where I've got where I've gotten it to. Uh, writing function takes two less characters. Right, for me it's just all about clarity. Right, the fact I see const sum, it's creating a variable. But now we're creating it as a function. Like there's just like maybe just create it as a top level function. Be clear with what you're trying to do. You know what I mean? Just be as clear as possible. So now we have some easy ways to reference a none and to create a sum. Now, once you have a wrapper type... I also understand that you can't. That this is a dead fight. I understand it's a dead fight. People, this is just what's happening. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen forever, forever, ever. You know what I mean? Uh, if you're trying to be as clear as possible, you'd rewrite it in Rust. This is very, very true. Solution, linter formatter that dominates everybody. I saw a video that said creating functions like that and normal functions are functionally different. They are functionally different. Uh, these wrapper functions actually lex lexically bind to this, whereas regular functions don't. So passing in an arrow function and you're referring to this gives you the ability to refer to this, whereas if you pass in a function that's an anonymous function, you can't actually bind to this. You bind to the global scope of this. Like, they are non-functionally equivalent like this, or an envelope, if you will, that we can put a value inside of. There's kind of two things you want to be able to do, right? The first one, of course, is we need to be able to create these. And the second thing, of course, is that we need to be able to consume them. Let's create a couple. I do want to take a step back here for a quick second. Having keyboard sounds, 100 IQ, okay? It proves he's really typing, okay?
couple of functions that make it easy to create or put values into an option and also to consume or pull those values out of the option. So I mentioned earlier a couple of scenarios where you might have a value or you might not. And one of those is if you have some function that throws an error. Wouldn't it be great if instead of throwing an error, we could just get back a none instead? Sometimes we don't really care about that error. We just want to know, did I get my value back or not? So to do that, let's create a function here called optional catch. Now this optional catch takes a function that returns some type t. Optional catch will return you an option of t. And then of course in here we just have a try catch. And we call the function that gets passed in. And if that function returns the value of type t as we would expect, then we can create a sum and return that. If instead it throws an error, we'll just catch that error and we'll return none instead. So for example here, we could create a function called greet. And it's really simple to have this return hello name. But maybe let's say we don't want to greet anyone named Andrew. So we could say if name equals Andrew, then instead Andrew. we'll throw an error. And so we either get our greeting or we don't. So what we can do now is create a variable here and we'll call this maybe greeting optional catch. Let's just say greet Andrew. And so if we look at the type of maybe greeting here, we can see that it is an option of string, which means there might be a string in here. And we'll look at how we can get that value out of it later when we look at our consumes. But for now, we've successfully handled the error and we've captured our value. Now, another common scenario for possibly getting a value back is when you're using... Hold on, my beautiful wife's calling me. Okay, when she calls me, I, I, I gotta answer. Hello? She hung up on me! I'm over here answering phone calls, being a... It's 1.5x speed. I'm not watching things. I'm a, I'm a programmer. Hey, what's up? Great. All right, here we go. Promises. So maybe we want to have an optional resolve function as well so that we can wrap a promise result in an option. So this is our optional resolve here. It takes some promise of type T and it returns a promise of option of T. Now that might feel like we're going in the opposite direction because we now have more wrappers on our T value. But because we're taking a promise and we have to await it, there's no way we can return anything but a promise from this function. The nice thing. Besides for a basic designs decision, I see where he's going with this one. We haven't watched CT, uh, CT, wait, what? Hold on, just stop. The thing, though, is that when we have something like our optional resolve here, we can know that when P might reject, promise of option of T is never going to reject. In the case of our catch here, we don't reject. Instead, we'll just resolve with a none instead. And so our code execution will continue until we actually need to inspect this value, but we don't get interrupted by an error. I've written this in a way that's pretty similar to what we did up here with our optional catch. Unfortunately, because of the way... So something that's, I think, kind of interesting about at least the uh, sum call, this sum call right here will effectively never be optimized inside of the JavaScript engine because T value changes. So that's one kind of interesting thing is you kind of destroy your monomorphism or whatever they call it, uh, which means you could get optimized, de-optimized semi-regularly. Kind of an interesting thing having these type of functions around promises work, there's not really a way for us to combine these. I guess you could also choose to write this with then and catch instead. So we could do something like return p dot then and we get a value out of p and then so we can return some of v. Otherwise, if we catch, we can just return none. So this is kind of no. a little bit more succinct. And Welcome if I Costco. comment this out, you can see that I this also you. matches our types. Sorry, I don't have enough money for it to never say that. Never say you're sorry. I appreciate your support wholeheartedly. Uh, just curious, did the combo with Theo yesterday make you feel a tad uncomfy? Feels like disagreeing with the friends can be tough. Uh, I don't feel, I, I don't feel, I, I don't feel uncomfortable about it. Um, I think that me and Theo will probably never see eye to eye on this one. Um, I can't make any guesses as to how we have arrived to two different conclusions. Uh, but we just have arrived to two different collusion, conclusions. I don't know. I don't know. This is maybe a little bit easier to read depending on the type of code you like to write. What we can do to actually give this a quick test is we can say maybe count optional resolve and we can have promise.resolve of 34 in there. If we hover over maybe count, we can see that we get a promise of option of number back. Now, the other thing we could do here is more likely we would be doing this inside of some kind of async function like this and I would probably have an await on here. And this and now is going to be an option of number. And so the await, of course, unwraps that promise for us. Now, handling an error that's thrown or a promise that's been rejected are two common cases. But you So one thing I see that's kind of interesting about this is that at least so far, he hasn't talked about this, but value lifting in TypeScript is not as good. Um, because you don't, yeah, you just don't have a lift operation, right? You don't have match or pattern matching. And so I feel like this is kind of difficulty. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like wrapping these, it's the, the one reason why I haven't really ever liked this idea of being available in JavaScript because there isn't the mechanisms to work with it nicely. Uh, you don't have like a nice concept around it. Uh, pattern. It feels like pattern matching is extremely needed for this, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong here.
you could also imagine wanting to create optionals around your own specific business logic. And for that, we can create what I'm going to call two optional. This is a function that returns one of these option creating functions. So the way this works is two optional has two generic arguments here, I and O for input and output, right? And these are the types that we expect to receive and the type that we expect to put into the option. Now, the way this works is that we expect the output to be a subset of the input. And we can encode that by saying O extends I. Now, if you're not sure what I mean here, think about the scenario where maybe you have a value that could be null or undefined or a string and you want an option of string. Or maybe I hate that ex example already. I don't want null or undefined or a string. Maybe you have something that could be a negative or a positive number and you want it to be an option of a positive number. In this case, I might be all numbers and O might be only positive numbers. And so to determine that narrowing, we take some function here that takes an I and returns a Boolean. And if that is true, then we are saying here that I is O. So that means our, our value here, I, is of type O. And so then this returns a function that takes an argument of type I and returns an option of type O. And we could write this in a single line, as you can see here, what I've got commented out. We can just say if function of argument is true, then we have a sum, otherwise we have none. However, why not include some try catch? I guess actually one way that we could make this a little bit smaller is I could put this in here in my try catch. May as well offer some free error handling while you're at it, um, but of course that's up to you. Now let's create an example. Error handling is not free. Example usage of this, and let's go with one of those use cases I mentioned earlier where we want to filter out null or undefined values. So let's create something here we're going to call optional defined, and we need to call to optional, and we know that we need to pass it some kind of function here. We want this to work for kind of any type, like, you know, string or undefined, number undefined, that type of thing. So we're going to need some generic t here. And this is going to take an argument that is t or undefined or null. And then this function can return if arg is not equal to null. Now notice that this isn't type checking just yet. And for better or for worse, TypeScript needs us to include the return type here where we're going to say arg is t. And so basically what this means, if arg is not null or undefined, then arg is of type t. One case where I know we get undefined or null is when you pop something out of an array. So for example, let's create a quick array here with a couple of numbers in it, and we can grab a value out of that, right? If we do array.pop. Now, if I hover over b, you can see that it's either a number or undefined, which makes sense because when you pop, we don't really know how many values are left in the array. If we wrap this in optional defined, then what we should get back instead is an option of number. Okay, so we've looked at a couple of ways that we can create these. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Hey, I love you too. MSP, uh, MSMPS. Um, you know, again, I like, I mean, I get where he's coming from with this, which is trying to figure out why, or just trying to include options, right? Because options are a superior version of undefined slash null. I think most people can be on that side of the table, meaning that, uh, it, it seems to make a lot Welcome of sense, at least. Uh, lol Tanker, you. thank you very much. I appreciate that. Let's go. Nine months on Twitch Prime's hard. And so, like, I totally feel that, but it's just like, I don't think I'd want this in my code base. You know what I mean? I don't think I'd want this to be around in my code base. I don't think I'd want to include a library using these kind of things. Uh, first off, one thing I just don't like, which we can't see right here, is just there's a lot of error catching. And options aren't necessarily meant to capture an error. Do you know what I mean? They're not meant to capture an error. They're meant to describe if something does not exist or does exist. And so, you know, like this whole thing that's going on is is a little bit, uh, you know, like maybe it's just ex his example, but it, it feels it feels goofy. Do you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't want this because I feel like it. At least this specific implementation it would just like hide everything, right? He's a yeah. He's he is conflating exceptions and undefined in this example. Yeah, and so it just feels dangerous. You know what I mean? I want, I don't think I want optionals right now in TypeScript until there's a mechanism to work with them well. Like you can have types, but you cannot, at, you cannot attach uh, implementations. And I hate that, right? So there's not really like doing this really high programmatic types mean you have like this type hierarchy that you build. And then you have to also build the same type hierarchy but you have to use it and build it in code. So it's like you get no advantage of using all these types. Uh, yeah, it just seems seems frustrating. Um, you know, Rust has its own problems. I, I most certainly don't think that um, you can extend through interface, but that's, I mean, that's so dangerous, right? That's like TypeScript's worst features. One of them, extend through interface. Two, any, right? Um, extend through interface is just so dangerous. It's just so dangerous. It really is. Is the fact that if you don't even realize it, right? Like, hey, thank you, uh, Jay Galt. I appreciate that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think this should just work. Uh, let's just find out really quickly. So there is actually something called a node, right? This is an interface that's available right here, 
right? And so if I'm not mistaken, I believe, let's just see if this one works. Let's see if I can do this way. Interface uh, node uh, bar baz is a uh, number, right? And so now what I have just done is that this is something that is totally used by something else, right? Something like this, uh, TS ignore, um, whoopsies. We're gonna, do, oh my goodness, uh, do that and go let uh, foo up wrong language. Const this thing equals node, get node, right? This function doesn't exist, whatever. We're just gonna say it exists and it returns type that. Is that now I have bar baz, right? Like I didn't mean to accidentally add a definition to something that already exists. I just tried to create my own node interface. And so like, I kind of, I just hate that, right? It just feels super dangerous. You know what I mean? It just feels like that's just like a surefire way to actually end up trying to debug a problem for a long time. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, the, the problem with it is that you can't, it's, it's not adding implementation details it's adding it's like mutating definition details right it's just it's it seems super scary the cool thing about option is and then yeah 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 map is neat i don't use it very often uh s biz thank you s biz you. just because i don't really need like i've never ran into a case where it's been super useful for me uh Anything basically only good for methods that accept it and do something like two string. The most other uses are very dumb. I don't even know what we're talking about. I literally run into this problem you described and ended up debugging for three hours. Yeah, it's extremely hard. That's the thing. It's extremely, extremely hard. If this if this is the faster than Lime one, I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> Thank you for including the Rust stuff. Um... It's, uh, let's see, my linter has stopped me from doing that. Yeah. Okay, dude. That's cool stuff. Uh, I don't think I want to watch any more of this. Do you want to, let's look a little bit, uh, is a monadic bind over an option type. When you speak like this, I want you to know that you be, it, it, it prolongs your stay as a tarnished, a maidenless tarnished longer. Okay. Just so you know. Careful. I'm trying to help you, you know, move on with your quest in life. You know, it's a very, it's very scary. You know, very scary. Missed that. I, mi I missed that blueberry. I missed it again. I missed it again. I've caught it four times without taking my eye off. I missed that last one. 